Hello everyone, the name is Eric Thor and this is Forest for Thought and in today's video we're exploring why a lot of gifted people don't feel gifted and why gifted people don't feel intelligent, right? And what I want to show you in this video is that giftedness and your ability to assess your own intelligence is relative to the level of challenge and difficulty that you set for yourself. Right? And so something you're going to notice is you feel as intelligent as you feel prepared and equipped to manage the challenges that you see ahead of yourself. Right? And so a lot of the time when gifted people say, oh, I'm not that smart, what they mean is I'm not smart enough to deal with the challenges that I'm currently faced with. Right? And so when a gifted person estimates their own intelligence. They do so by looking at their own situation and their own goals and their own quests and challenges. And so they might imagine relationship goals, they might imagine life goals, they might have expectations for what they want to achieve and what they want to do and how quickly they want to do it. And a lot of the time when we estimate our intelligence, we do so by looking at how well am I able to meet my own challenges and goals. And so what you're going to notice as a gifted person is you might set goals beyond your current level and ability, which means on average, perhaps you've trained yourself to constantly feel stupid by constantly keeping yourself in company of people that are smarter than you, right? That can also mean you might feel stupid because you're reading level of literature that is a level beyond your current level, right? And so you're engaging with and you're thinking about things that are just a little bit more difficult than what you're currently equipped to handle, right? And so a lot of gifted people are in the state of constantly challenging themselves, constantly pushing their limits, constantly trying to step up their game or improve. And so a lot of gifted people don't really feel that intelligent. And now we're going to talk about why that is. Why do gifted people set challenges that are above their difficulty level? Why do gifted people tend to have such high goals and standards for themselves? Well, one reason is because as a gifted person, you're often told that you're intelligent. Yeah, a lot of gifted people are told that you're so smart and you seem to do so well and you seem to learn so fast and you seem to show so much promise, right? And people are constantly praising you on this. They're praising you on your intelligence, or how engaged you are with things, and how you know much you put into things, right? And they see that you're putting in effort, and they see that you care. And what people tend to do when they get praise is they tend to up their challenge, you know? Okay, people seem to like me for doing this. And in order to get approval, in order to get appreciated by other people, I should do more of that. So I get even more approval and even more praise, right? And so a lot of these things are rooted in our desire to be liked. And gifted people are no different from any other kind of person in the world. They seek approval, they seek to be appreciated, and they seem to be liked by other people. They seek the approval of their teachers, of their parents, and of, of course, adults, and of role models and people that they're inspired by, right? What makes this worse is one thing that I see with gifted people is they seem to have a very low conception of personal boundaries in the sense that they don't seem to think that they have an infinite amount of energy and that they have an infinite amount of potential, right? And this comes from their capacity for gifted people to manage their own emotions. One fancy word for managing your own emotions is compartmentalizing. And when you compartmentalize, you put emotions away or you put them aside or you choose to say they're not important, right? And so gifted people might learn very easily and very early that they can set their stress aside. I'm afraid, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go out and do the thing that I'm scared of. I'm stressed, doesn't matter. I'm gonna push through it and I'm going to keep going and I'm gonna keep working at it till I figure it out. I'm tired, not important. I'm gonna keep pushing myself, right? You see the picture here. What gifted people seem skilled at doing is self-regulating emotions, but not all gifted people get to the level of self-regulation where they realize that they can't just push emotions aside. And just because you have this capacity of your brain to turn off signals and emotions and to say they're not there anymore and I'm not going to listen to those emotions anymore, doesn't mean that those emotions are not there. And so when you 
really want to hit, hit that extra level of intelligence or giftedness, what you really have to do is you have to recognize that you can't push aside your emotions. You can't ignore stress. You can't ignore energy or enthusiasm or uh, fear or any of those things, right? You have to recognize that these things are there and that they are going to play a part in your life and you need to recognize them and their influence on you and on your emotions in the longer perspective. What often happens is gifted people ignore these things, right? And they keep on ignoring them for a very long time. And what happens if you ignore, for example, a feeling of exhaustion for a very long time? Well, it means your brain gets more and more tired, but you act like you're still alert, still energetic, and still full of enthusiasm, right? So what you might see is you're constantly pushing yourself to stay engaged, and you're working harder, and you're showing more resolve and more resilience, and you keep pushing yourself to keep learning, to keep studying, and to keep cramming more and more info in, and to keep up with your mind, right? But what you're not realizing is you're getting more and more tired. So your brain has to put in more and more effort to do this. And it has to, you know, keep itself jolted awake and alert. And so it drinks more coffee. So it, you know, uses stimulation in whatever way it can. Music to constantly keep it on. You know, TikTok videos to constantly keep your attention engaged, right? And that's what I see with gifted people. Giftedness means you have an overactive mind to the extent that your mind is so on that sometimes it's hard for you to tell yourself to stop. And the biggest reason why gifted people struggle to stop is because they feel they have so much they're supposed to do. Their parents, their teachers, everyone says they could become somebody successful, somebody important, somebody amazing, right? But here's the thing. You don't actually need to do any of those things. It's completely fine if you choose not to have any ambitions at all. With great giftedness does not come great responsibility. That's an argument that's based on a fallacy. Why would responsibility come from intelligence or from skill? Why would you need to push or work yourself harder if you're more intelligent? You don't need to. You can choose to just enjoy and live your life and to focus on your own goals and your own desires and what it is that you want to do for yourself. But that's a topic for the next video. How do you feel? Do you feel tired right now? And do you feel stressed? Do you feel anxious? Or do you feel angry about something? Do you take the time to check in with your own emotions and to think about what it is that you feel? And do you take the time to process and recover and to rest? These are all things that are going to play a vital importance in staying sharp, and staying alert, past your 20s, past your 30s, you know, well into your late adult life. And what I see is most gifted people burn out in their 20s when there's no reason to. You can continue to live and enjoy your life and you can set healthy boundaries for yourself to keep yourself happy and energized and engaged with the world in whatever way you want.